Hello everyone, I'm Corey Mitchell with TradeThatSwing.com and this is your Swing Trading Stock Market Outlook for the week of September 16th. Each week I go through the same process, just deciding how aggressively I'm going to be, what I'm looking for throughout the week. I only update this once per week, but conditions do change throughout the week, so I'm watching these every day. But this weekly one just kind of sets the stage, lets me know what I'm... Yeah, what I'm looking for, what would have to change to get me really interested, what's not ideal, what would need to, what ideal would look like, those types of things so that, yeah, I can calibrate how aggressively I want to be trading today, how aggressively I want to be scanning, those sorts of things. And then as those change, that aggression, as those indicators and things that I look at change, that determines, uh, you know, it's, it's yeah, going to change throughout the week how aggressively I'm going to be trading. So right now things are pretty good, but not ideal. So if we started to see some of those things become uh, better, some of those things that aren't quite good right now, then I become more aggressive and that can happen at basically whenever those indicators uh, start looking better. So heading into the week of September 16th, conditions are pretty good. As I said, not ideal. I have a couple concerns with price action, but the market health indicators are pretty good overall, except for heightened volatility, which actually ties into the price action a bit. There are some watch lists you can check out, the best swing trading stocks list for September. I will be updating that this week. Uh, it gets updated every couple weeks. And it has a list of very strong stocks, a list of very weak stocks. So if conditions turn to the downside, there's stocks that are weak there that we could potentially look at shorts in. And if things stay strong, there's some strong stocks on there that we could check out for potential trades. Uh, some other ones as well you can check out. How the indices are doing. So let's check that out. Oh, I left my indicators on there, so it's a little squished, but you can still see the price action pretty good. So NASDAQ, this big decline, a rally, much higher low. So you can see a lower high here and then a higher low. So we kind of have a conflicting trend there, right? We have an element of an uptrend and we have an element of a downtrend. Uh, lower high for the downtrend a higher low for the uptrend and we're kind of stuck there a little bit uh, that's just kind of looking at the big broad picture we're going to dissect that price action a little bit in a second s p 500 kind of the same thing big drop rallied almost to the high drop and we're just below the prior high so again slightly lower high but this one looking more bullish than the nasdaq or at least looking uh, yeah a little nicer stronger recoveries Canadian index in an uptrend had the pullback. It's at new highs. NYSE, slightly different, uh, kind of more like the TSX index. Big move to a new high compared to the NASDAQ, which was at a lower high, and the S&P, which was at a lower high. So really big run, big higher swing low, and we're basically recovering from this recent pullback. So this one's still an uptrend. This one in an uptrend. S&P close to an uptrend, but more of this triangle type pattern where we can draw a line along the highs and a line along these lows. And the Russell, same thing, basically in this kind of ugly triangle type pattern where you have elements of an uptrend and a downtrend. So that's why I said there's some price action issues here. We, we can't really assume that these are gonna break out to the upside. I don't really like to guess but I do like that if we look at both the NASDAQ and the S&P, so you have this drop here and you have a little bit bigger pullback here than the drop. Then we have a very strong rally above this swing high here. So if you're looking at kind of swing highs, you could say, well, in the short term, we had a little downtrend here and that was reversed by this move above this swing high. Same with the NASDAQ, nice sharp drop. First kind of most significant pullback, I would say, of this drop, and then we rallied sharply above it. So if you were looking at swing highs, you could say, well, here was a swing high, here's a swing high. So a higher swing high there, and then if you look at the lows, you have a higher swing low here. So you're starting to 
to move up. So kind of bigger picture, we talk more about that triangle. In the shorter term, looking a little more bullish. But again, it's this isn't ideal. We still have those kind of question marks. Which way is it gonna go? When everything's just in an uptrend, uh, that's when I'm much more aggressive. When I kind of have a few of these question marks, you're just not gonna, or at least I don't deploy 100% of my capital. You can decide how much that is. Maybe this is 70% for you, or 60%, or if you feel really uncertain about this, maybe it's only half your capital, or 40%. You can decide where this uh, fits in. And as I said, it might change a little bit each day, depending on how these proceed. If we get a strong start to next week, then I'm probably gonna be a little more aggressive and say, you know what, things are, things are looking good, everything's uh, moving in uptrends. We move to new highs on the S&P 500. And yeah, so we can calibrate that. Bitcoin, we had talked last week, we were down here and I wanted to see a sharp rally followed by a higher swing low and then a push higher to potentially move up into this, more toward the top of this triangle. You can see like last time we had this shot up pullback and it didn't get to the top of the triangle, but at least you know we did have a decent move there. So uh, this chart doesn't quite show it all, but we've been moving in this rectangle, this descending channel for quite some time. And yeah, so these are opportunities. Once I don't like just trying to buy at the low uh, because you can see you get these really sharp moves. I prefer wait for the bounce, get the pullback, and then buy in. So we're at that stage now where we've had the bounce. We're in a little bit of a pullback here. If we start moving up or if we move a little bit deeper and then start moving up, that's a, a potential trade I would consider. Uh, I gotta come back to the S&P, but let's uh, go to gold for a second. Gold, in this kind of like weaker uptrend, but a nice sort of rounded bottom type pattern here, where we just, you know, edging up a little bit. Nice consolidation there, even like a cup and handle type uh, pattern. Choppy though, uh, a nice consolidation here, big breakout. And this whole time the GDX was confirming, so we can look to the miners the, the markets, the gold markets generally strongest when the miners are confirming. They tend to act, they can often be a kind of leading indicator. So if gold stocks make a new high when gold makes a new high, that's a good sign. So we got that basically on each one of these. Gold moved up to a high. The gold stocks move to a new high same with here same with here 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 and gold moved to a new high and gdx is right there with it kind of right at its high so once those things aren't confirming let's say gold keeps running up and gdx starts you know making lower swing highs that's kind of a indicator that the gold uptrend could be running out of steam but at least for right now they are confirming each other and that's all they're doing is confirming they're not uh, you know based on this we can't tell if it's gonna drop next week or you know that would just be based on your own strategies and stop losses and things but at least for right now the gold miners and gold looking pretty solid so one thing I was going to say about the S&P 500 and kind of all these indices that are in this triangle type pattern is I don't, I don't really like to make the assumption that they're just going to rocket higher. But there is that possibility, right? We talked about the bullish price action. So in this type of situation, I would trade with things on a tight leash. And what I mean by that is we had this bigger drop, move to a new, uh, nice recovery, pull back, and we're moving back up to the highs here. So what I've, if you go back and you look at the S&P and you just kind of look at situations like this, you see one of two things generally happen. We either do get a nice continuation run to the upside which means if we're taking long trades, and I don't trade the indices, I trade individual stocks. 
But if we're trading individual stocks, you're usually going to see you know strength because the indices are all doing well, and they're composed of the stocks that we are trading. So we get this run up. If we get a faltering here, and we start to turn down, I'm going to get out of these trades very quickly because the other situation we see develop is that this is just part of you know a bigger decline. So we had about a 10% decline in the S&P here. We've had a recovery and then we could see another leg to the downside if this is a downtrend. I don't know if it is. All I'm saying is there's, there's a question mark with this pattern. And if we look at this pattern, we basically see two scenarios, either the sharp run up or a turn back down. Sounds simplistic, but it is. So that means if I'm taking trades right at this kind of, let's call it an inflection point, I'm not just going to wait to see how things develop over weeks. It's like if I'm taking trades here, I get to find out pretty quickly if this market's going to run higher or it's going to turn lower. So there's no reason to give it tons of room, uh, big stop losses. Like Even if my stock's doing okay and the S&P really turns down hard early in the week, I've seen that pattern play out many a times. And the NASDAQ, you know, like over here, if this starts turning down, this is uglier than the S&P 500. Same with IWM uh, or the Russell 2000. If it turns down here, um, you know, it kind of hasn't had this bullish turn that the S&P 500 has. It's well below its prior highs. Not looking as good. So there's that question mark and that just another kind of thing, like as a not just allocating capital, if there's question marks, I, I put things on a tighter leash. I'm not gonna give them a lot of room and I sometimes want to wait for the stop loss to get hit. If it's not performing how I want it to perform, something spooks me, I will just get out and wait and see. And to me, trading is about improving our own decision making. It's not about predicting the market per se. So let's say I get out and then the market does end up shooting higher. That's okay. My decision based on what I saw, my interpretation of it, that's all I can act on, right? That's all we can ever act on. And then we can develop our skill by looking at, you know, loads of examples and trying to find prior examples of patterns like this in the market and we may be able to get better at you know developing a better strategy that maybe has a higher win rate or something like that but ultimately it comes down to what we see in the moment how do we interpret it what are our strategies saying what are the things that we look at saying and what is the best decision we can make based on that so I talk every week. This is not about prediction. I'm not saying the market's gonna go this way or this way. I'm saying where can I get sort of the best risk reward opportunities? And right now we're starting to look good, but there are a couple things that are a bit concerning. So I'm gonna factor that in to my trading decisions. So let's look at the health indicators. Volume, we had these what I call throw up days last week where uh, we basically have high volume, higher volume than the prior day, big sell off type days. And when they come relatively soon after a follow through day, I call them throw up days. They have been recovered. So I'd say, you know, volume's kind of neutral at the moment. We've had some downside days followed by some good upside days, and they've basically nullified themselves. This is just daily percentage movement, and we can see here, even from the short amount of time it's showing on the chart, during uptrends, it is lower volatility. We do not get big sell-off days like what we've had recently. 
Uh, even during this, you know, this was kind of a rhythmic decline. We did not get any big sell-off days. It was just an orderly sell-off. Same with this one. And then this one was a little bit different, which, you know, that does stick in the back of my mind. We've partially recovered it on the S&P 500, but the NASDAQ, not as much. IWM, not as much. So we've had a big sell-off with heightened volatility, a lot of selling action, and that's just another one of those things. It's just not ideal settings. The price action here, you know, it kind of looks okay. We've recovered, but this heightened volatility is scary because on any given day, right now in this kind of environment, you could just get a big sell-off day that just wipes out the last few days of gains. And if you're in an individual stock, you know, a 2% drop in the S&P in a more volatile stock could be a 5, 10, percent drop in a you know just a normal stock this is the nyse advanced decline line advancing stocks minus declining stocks is a cumulative number it has moved to new highs while the s p is below its high that is bullish that is a bullish divergence indicating that uh, when this happens usually the s p makes a new high we're very close to it so that wouldn't be a huge move up this is up volume divided by total volume. I'm looking for extreme values, either hitting this upper black line or this lower black line, and we have not had any in a long time, so that's just neutral. This is the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average, just a crude measure of the number of stocks in an uptrend. 72% of S&P 500 stocks are above their 50-day moving average or in a short-term uptrend, we could say, and 57% of all US stocks are in an uptrend or above their 50-day moving average. I generally find it much easier to make money on the long side when we have this above 50, meaning more than half of stocks are above their 50-day or very crudely moving up. And yeah, you just think of it mathematically. If you were just to throw a random stock out there thinking it's gonna go up, it's gonna be a lot easier to make money if a higher percentage of stocks are moving up. So this one pretty good, and yeah, we're into positive territory on those, or above 50%, which is good. Sectors on the move. Technology, consumer cyclicals making a big comeback last week. If we go down, they've kind of been the not so good sectors over the last few months, as we saw from kind of the NASDAQ index shows that story but really nice comeback, basic materials as well. It was also kind of weak down here over the last three months, but making a nice recovery. So those are definitely ones to look, uh, to see if that turn continues. And real estate also strong overall, kind of in the middle of the pack over the last week, but still a nice up move, three and a half percent overall. Best performance over the last month and the last three months. So what I'm doing right now, long trades are a possibility in stocks, Bitcoin, gold. Uh, if the setups form, right, you got to, you know, look for your own setups and uh, trade based on them. Uh, but price does need to follow through here. Pretty much on all these things, uh, if stocks turn here lower, same with Bitcoin, uh, you know, Bitcoin can have a little bit of a, a pullback, that's fine. But if it makes a, you know, really sharp drop, and doesn't make the turn up. Same with stocks. Uh, stocks, I pretty much want to see keep going up. If they start turning really hard here at this inflection point, given that there's a couple yellow flags out there, I'll probably just back off totally from stocks and, and wait a little bit. Because uh, I do think we're kind of at that inflection point. And so yeah, there's a question mark there and I want to see how that goes. So I'm cautiously long, I guess you could say. Uh, with trades on a tight leash, and we discussed what that means. And yeah, because conditions aren't ideal, that also means I won't be just piling in capital at the moment. I'd maybe a little bit here, a little bit there if I see setups that I like. If they keep working out and things get better, then I'll add in. Always the option to day trade stocks or the Euro USD or any Forex pair, really. Uh, there's action most days as opposed to swing trading, which is this kind of calibrated 
active this week, not so active next week, really active all next month. Last month we didn't do anything. You know, it's kind of more of this on-off switch. And as we discussed in this one, kind of this calibration of, well, how much capital am I going to deploy? How aggressively am I going to be trading? And day trading is more just, you know, action and, you know, you put your capital on the line, uh, in and out, in and out. So a different style of trading, but uh, definitely something you can check out if that seems to fit your style more. So that's your outlook for this week. Have a great trading week out there.